Hi everyone, Solcer17 here. So let me get through this like usual. I don't own the pictures. I basically, well, made the thumbnail and not paid video. All right, okay. So here's the thing. Um, allow me to explain a little bit because I just want to get right into it. Um, so Izuku, corkless. All right, no cork, nothing. All of his, you know, life he. You know, was bullied, but he started training at a, well, somewhat of a decent age. Not very heavy training, you know, like him going dying, you know, of his auction or anything. Just light training. Um, everything went to canon, but Inko was Quirk gave her well, a problem for well, brain and. So, Slowly and surely, though, she's, um, she passes, but that's later on. So, Izuku saves All Might. And All Might, I mean, Izuku saves Bakugo, sorry. Sorry, I was thinking of All Might for a minute. Um, All Might doesn't, you know, like, you know, basically, you know, offer Izuku the quirk. Because Deku denied it. He said he wanted to be the very first quirkless, you know, hero, which All Might said, alright then, I hope you, you know, pass, and I'll see you at, if you ever get to UA, which Izuku says thanks. So, Izuku trained, he did, he worked at Deco, you know, Deco Beach, cleaning it up, but he did a lot more than just that of training, he basically even took some martial arts. Um, he worked on his reflexes the whole entire time when he was young, and his flexibility. So, basically, meanwhile, though, during the 10 months of training, Inko went to the hospital because she suddenly collapsed, and, well, she only had little time left, actually, which Izuka never knew, and, yeah. So, Inko passes away. And, well, he is going to start training even more, and also working. He thinks he needs to do, but the landlord never asked him for any money. But, you know, but anyways. So, this is during the ninth month, before he even gets to UA. By the way, he's staying in the world where he's going. So... And I don't care if that's how you spell summon wrong, by the way. I just don't care. So, yeah. So, basically, Izuku's being summoned to Ruby. But, that's... Well, I'll, we'll get to the story after I just explain this. Someone gave me an idea to, well, what semblance Izuku can have. And I talked to my friend who watched more of Ruby than me. Because I'm starting from Season 1 again. Well, I mean, Volume 1. And so... He said about his semblance, he can use something to have it then where he, well, while whoever, anyone who is in this field, he can use something to, well, copy their weapon ability, like, you know, their weapon as such. So, that's what's going to happen. I'm also... Well, M giving him something that works really well because his mother's telekinesis and his father's fire breathing. Yes, Hisashi, you know, has fire breathing, which, you know, he did leave Inko. Not because Izuku was quirkless, it's because he said he was not ready to be a father. <laughs> so, yeah. But, since I got that all out of the way, let's just get into this what if. So, this is what Deku was summoned to Ruby. Part 1. Alright. I don't even know why I have my fan. Oh, yeah, my mom has a TV on. I don't want you guys to hear it. So, okay, it doesn't matter. So, anyways. So, somebody in the world of Ruby is in front of somebody. And he's saying, we do not have time. A war is coming near, and it uh, seems like it's coming closer than I thought. Who are we going to find to basically wield the power that you hold, Amber? And which this man's wearing a... Wait, I think I'm right on the name. Hold on. Yeah, I was right. So, this person in a hood with a cane, basically. 
is looking at her and well he does start pon you know pondering on which candidate could work. As then all of a sudden something starts to flicker. Something weird to this man. As he was like, what the what's happening? This never has happened before. As the vials of amber are still good, but then a flame appears, which, well, technically it's a flame and orb. As then, we, this man's like, like, wait, how is that possible? What's, is she? No, it seems like she's still alive. As, well, suddenly, someone hand is underneath this flame and orb, as he goes, Amber? How are you? She goes, this power wants to be chosen. Well, blah, not chosen. This power wants to choose somebody. And I'll need your help. Please. Which, she goes, what do you mean? He goes, I can hear it calling out to somebody. Somebody who needs it more than anything. And someone who may be able to help us. Which, he goes, I see. It... Who is she? He was like, I don't think it's a she. Which, this man is shopping. He was like, but the power should be... He was, I know, but... <sighs> it wants to be chose... It wants to choose its person. It seems like it has. I don't know why. I just have a feeling. So, he was... Alright, done. Let's see what this power you know chose. As its wielder. As then, well, with this man's help and Amber's power. Okay, before you guys even say anything, I know the lore of, like, the Maiden and everything. But Izuku's not from that world. So, I don't think it matters. Because if you, you can't really say, like, someone who's from a different world... Suddenly gets a power that should be given to someone else that's from that world and follow the exact same rules. He is from a different one. That that's my logic. If you're from a different world, you can follow the same the the world you're summoned to's rules, but the powers you will get are different. The laws of reality in that world are technically different. And also, this is a what if. So, you know, I'm just explaining my reasoning. Why. Well, Basically, I'm giving him this, but um, it technically you'll see mostly. But moving on, so as well, basically a magical circle starting to appear around them. As then he asks, "Are you ready?" She nods, and then he goes, "All right then." That's basically he. Taps his staff on the ground as in light appears. Izuku, meanwhile, is well, sleeping. And he's just... Remembering his mom. He's going... Um... Where are we? She goes, Come on, sweet, we're getting your favorite food. He's like, oh, yeah. Sorry. Why is there... What's the reason? She goes, well, you've been training so hard. So I thought, why not treat you? To a very good meal. He's like, <laughs> all right. <sighs> Thank you, mom. She was, it's no problem, Izuku. Basically, this is his last memory of his mom. Hold on, real quick. <sighs> Sorry, I just sneezed. Anyways, so though, while the dreams continue on, him and his mom are hanging out, eating. All of a sudden, well, um, the dream starts to change. She goes, it's time, Izuku. He goes, wait, what? It's time for you to wake up. He goes, wait, mom, why are you... As then all of a sudden he's awake and he's in a... Well, it seems to be on a platform. A very large platform. As he's in the center of it. He was like, what the... Where am I? As then he hears a voice. He was like, you're in between dimensions, young man. And I'm sorry for this, but it... <laughs> Seems you're chosen, and, well, we need your help. He goes, what? What do you mean? It's too much to talk to right now. 
But I assure you, I will explain everything to you one day. But for right now, I need to ask you some questions. You was uh, sure. Do you believe in anything? Anything at all? Myths? Legends? Or, well, your own beliefs in your world? About heroes? Villains? Which, Izuku just, well, thinks about this. He was, well, to be honest, my views of people have changed over the years. I've been bullied just because I had no power. But I still believe people, there are some good in people. And, well, as for villains, uh, there's nothing much I can say. I don't know them very well. All I know is about their quirks. He was, and this, well, person in the green hood and the cane, basically he sees. Well, technically he can see, like, long green eyes. He was like, quirks? What are those? He was, oh, a, a power that someone's born with. Basically, 20% of the population have quirks, and about 80% of the pop well, not 20%, I mean, 20% well, twenty percent have no quirks, while 80% of the population have quirks. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Basically, each person that's born from quirk can be have the same, same quirk as their parents combined, or different, depending. Some people can have a quirk like explosions, ice, fire, um, skin hardens to be something else. People can, well, be visible or shoot at something, or basically have mutations that are tails, something like a coat hanger, and anything else. Which, he was, ah, I see. So, you are born with no power, correct? He was, yeah. Which he says, interesting. As this man is thinking, he goes like, I see. Seems he's not lying, and he's telling the truth. He was no then though, do you believe in legends? He was like magic, myths, creatures of old that shouldn't you know, really is this like dragons that for fairy tales? He was yes. He was Well, it seems to me, sir, that that there's always some truth in every legend. But or story actually. But that's the thing. I don't know for sure. So, I guess I can only believe it when I see it. Or just have faith it's real. <laughs> I technically ha well, basically was told by my mom, my optimistic attitude for well, trusting in people, it's pretty high. So, <laughs> it does get me in trouble though. Anyways, the man just nods. He was like, I see. Well then, allow me to explain why you're here. Like I already said about the world is in danger. Not your world specifically, mine. And I already said this is the well, space between the worlds. You see, the world I'm from is different. There are no quirks. There are things called semblance, auras, grims, hunters, and huntresses. Huntress basically. And a thing called dust. Dust gives certain properties. Red gives you fire. Um, blue gives you technically water or ice. Along with many other dust. I don't really know all the colors, but I'm just guessing by what I saw. So, uh, don't blame me, please. So basically, though, as well, how can I also I say this fully to, to not freak you out? People are born with these things called semblance and auras. And if we use, if you're well, trying to become a huntsman or a huntress, weapons. Weapons that can basically be a normal weapon or transform. To basically become a gun. Or any long range weapon. <laughs> He goes, uh, I see. So, what's gonna happen to me? He goes, you are not being reborn into this world, um, Izuka Midoriya. He goes, Izuka Midoriya, my apologies. <laughs> I should have asked that of you. He was like, D 
did you not know me at all? He was like, oh, no, no, no. I was brought here with the help of somebody because, well, that will be explained later. I promise you. It's like, okay. So, I can grant you certain things. One, I will give you aura. Two, I'll give you a semblance that's, well, suited to you specifically. He was like everyone else in the world. He goes, uh huh. It may be weird, <laughs> but please believe in me. And uh, I can explain what it can do. He was like, all right. It was good. Now then. First off, let me do that real quick. Please come forward. As Azuku comes forward to him, as then this man places his hand on Azuku's head. And so Azuku gains aura and a semblance. There was a technically a glowing light on him, which he's very shocked about how much aura Azuku has. He was um young Zuku, right, Zuku, you have an extreme amount of aura. Why is that? He's, um, how do you usually get it? He was like, you can be even born with it, train hard to increase it, learn certain ways like meditation. I'm just adding this all in. This is how I think you could increase. You have an aura. So please, if they some if they say it in the you know, the Ruby series, don't. No, please write down in the comments saying, oh, they said it, like, it's supposed to do it like this. I just want to, you know, add on my own little thing. Because, you know, I want to change some things up. <laughs> so my apologies to anyone who knows it and, well, would tell me. I'm not trying to be rude. You guys can tell me. I, I mean, as I said, don't. I know you guys are going to. So I'm okay with it. I just want to explain you know and I did so continuing on you as it was like oh I see <laughs> well I've been training since I was young I worked on my agility and reflexes and all my flexibility then when I got older I started taking martial arts at least <laughs> working on my well growing stronger because I was gonna become the very first quirkless hero which this man says, ah, I see. Well, that seems to be a, a bright future you wanted. He goes, yeah, but people like my bully don't think I could. Quirkless people aren't well treated. Which then, he, this, well, this man thinks just like the Faunus. Outcasted. <sighs> Every world, it's always like that. Well then, this can change his life. So, he goes, Well, I'm sorry to hear you went through so much pain, I believe. He was like, <laughs> Yeah, explosion quirk. That's a number on your body, but after a while you get pretty used to it. Which he was like, uh, You've been exploded? He was, Well, basically nitro gristle and sweat in the palm of someone's hand. They shoot an explosion, the force and the heat. The impact if it's up close. <laughs> it doesn't number on you, but after a while, if they don't do it life threatening, you're basically your body becomes resistant to it to a certain degree. And you get a lot more tougher skin. Which he's like, uh, you just seem optimistic. It's like kinda used that as my train to get even stronger. Which, well, he just says, You're crazy boy. He just he which is it goes <laughs> Uh, I kind of get that from some people. Doesn't really matter to me. So, well, the man just sighs. He's like, all right, then. So, since now I know why you have so much aura, I must tell you about your semblance. It's quite <laughs> unique. Very unique, actually. He was, huh? He was, you basically can deactivate dust, and other people's semblance, even their auras. For, well, these beasts called Grim, you can technically make them weaker. 
Which Azuka was like, huh, so is my semblance that good? He was like, in a world of dust and, well, abilities like semblance and grims, yes, actually, it is very good. Basically, this idea was given to me by a comment for it, like I said, but I'm just adding some more to it, along with the idea my friend, you know, helped me on, because I wanted to give Izuku kind of like, I didn't know which long-range weapon to give him, so, yeah, so basically then he was like, also, it seems it has a second ability to it, which is unique, he's like, uh, okay, you seem you need something to wear around yourself and, well, launch it at someone's weapon. This then will technically have a light going onto it as it will then transform into that weapon. Hmm. I think I, I can, blah, blah, sorry, tongue twisted. It was, I think I can create it, but I'll have to know your weapon first, what you'll want. It's like, uh, okay. <laughs> Please, choose which weapon. He was like, huh? As in, he then I attached his staff, as in holographic images of weapons appear. Which is, he was like, whoa, this is cool. He was, yes, so, please choose. So basically, Izuku's seen many different weapons. There's a lot. But something in particular catches his eye. A, basically, a bow staff. He was... I, wow, that seems amazing. When well, Izuku basically, if you know it's a hologram, he has a, he doesn't know why, he's reaching out for it. When he grabs it, it becomes real. And then he's like, what the, how did I, how did it, he was, huh, and that's, well, a unique choice. It's really not just a bow staff. He's like, huh? It's like the switch. He's like, wait, there's a switch on it? He was like, yes. On your thumb. He's like, okay. And when he does flick a little switch, all of a sudden a scythe appears on it. He's like, whoa! How, how did this blade... In, it became a scythe? He was... <laughs> uh, I never expected you to pick that one. A scythe is very, well, difficult to use. But I know some people who can help you out. Now... For your long range weapon. He's like, uh, okay. As, well, this man starts to summon out what is needed for Zuku to have. As what lands in this man's hand is a scarf. Basically, it's like Aizawa's. He's like, uh, a scarf? He was like, not just any scarf. Basically, a scarf that has metal fibers imbued into it. And, well, depending on what weapon you basically you know, copy, this will be able to fire out projectiles, too. So, if the weapon can transform into a gun, you'll be able to use that gun, too. But this will require training. You don't have much training in, well, as you said, weaponry. So, you'll have to start as soon as you become a huntsman. He was like, uh... Wait, I have to become one? He's like, yes, I'm afraid so. I cannot give you a choice. I apologize for that. He was like, are they like heroes? He was like, hmm, yes, actually. They are like heroes. They actually help out people, save people. They can't save everyone, though. So please understand that you are still human. You're not some god. He goes, right. So, Izuku goes up and grabs a scarf and wraps it around, put it around his neck. He goes like, huh, kind of reminds me of a razor head. He goes, huh, who is a razor head? He's like, oh, um, a underground hero. I met him one time when he saved me when I was, well, <laughs> coming back home late from training. He basically, you know, walked me home. I was really impressed by his quirk and I wish I always had it. So, <laughs> eh. Kind of got lucky, huh? He became a semblance. Still don't know what that is. Well, technically. It's hard to wrap it around my head. It's like, that's fine. Which then... This man says, Huh. I guess him wishing 
he actually had that type of quirk come in handy. So, as then he basically looks at Suku, are you ready to receive this power? He goes, yeah, what is it? Well, aside from an aura and semblance, there are scenes in this world that, well, are magic. Something people that don't ever have. This power is cut in half because someone tried to steal this from a maiden. And since you're not from the world, uh, my world, and hers, as in this go oh, Amber basically is coming walking up holding well basically hand underneath the orb of fire it's basically decided to choose someone else and well it, because it was power was taken it like I said was chosen someone else and for some reason it chose you usually this is only supposed to be held by well a maiden Never, well, truly anyone else. To be frank, <laughs> this is a, I think, a one-time thing. And I don't understand why, but when I did touch you, you know, basically your forehead, I could see it. Your DNA was, well, supposedly, your mother, I guess, mother's side, has telekinesis, and your father had pyro, you know, breathing fire. So, I guess if you had a quirk, or, well, you should've, which in Izuku's eyes, he was like, wait, what do you mean, should've? He goes, that's the thing, it seems like your quirk was taken. Yes, like, I, I did say Izuku was gonna be quirkless, but I just never, I just had the idea of him, not now, I mean, in this space, at least seriously, before I made it, I did have the idea of him actually having a quirk, but it was taken, and he's not gonna give it back anyway, because of semblance, and he's never, you know, going to go back. I don't really want him to go back, so yeah. Anyways, continuing on. So he goes, so wait, someone took my quirk? And basically this man nods. He was like, that's what I sensed or felt. You should have had something there, but it was missing. But now since you have a semblance and aura, and well, you already technically should have had pyrokinesis, this power that shows you. Allow me to explain what it is. And the four maidens. So basically he just gets the rundown of winter, spring, summer, fall. And that basically each maiden does not have sem well technically they can have a semblance and aura. But they don't ever have to use dust. They basically have massive amount of power. Basically the fall one can basically this is what I read, can shoot out fire projectiles. And can basically, well, Amber then adds in, she basically could have frozen, well, any leaf to make it into a projectile. She could also use the weather as lightning and summon out wind. It seems like this power, though, the power of fall, chose you for a reason, Izuka Midoriya. And, and we must tell you this. This is only a one-way trip. You're never going to go back to your world. With Suzuku's eyes widen. And he goes... In which the man looks at him and goes like, I'm sorry. I know I should have told you, but... I wanted to give you this just in case. If he's denied you know, going to, my, to our world. To our dimension. You can still go back if you have anyone there. Which Izuku thinks... He doesn't, his mom's gone. He's on his own. Bakugo and him aren't friends. He has no friends. Mitsuki is his aunt, but if he lived with Bakugo, it's just going to live worse. He wants to say goodbye to you know, aunt, his aunt and uncle. And that's it. That's the only thing he wants to do. He goes, if I go, if I say yes. Can I add a condition? He's... Anything, Izuku. Anything. Can I say goodbye to two people before leaving? Which Amber and this man look at him and they nod. Did Amber says, that would be... Well, that's the least we can do. But do you accept? He was... I got nothing at home. My mom's dead. I want pit on me. 
I mean, if you guys really need my help to basically summon me from another dimension, just like a, you easily kied me. But <laughs> if you need my help, I don't mind. I like I need well I like helping out people and I want to. I could be a hero either way, and you guys are giving me a chance to be that, be a hero. So, of course I'm gonna say yes. But I want to say goodbye to two people, please. Which, well, this man nods his head. And so he asks, who are they? He goes, Mitsuki Bakugo, and her husband's name. Which, he's quite surprised. He was like, oh, you're bullies. My parents? He goes, they're like my aunts and uncles since my mom was so close to them. Well, close to his mom. He's like, I see. Very well then. So... As basically, the room ch suddenly change. As he's in so the Bakugo's house, you know, the Bakugo residence. As Mitsuki's there along with her husband and Bakugo. As, well, basically it's just like right in front of the TV while they were in the kitchen, well, in the dining room eating. And, and basically Mitsuki saw them just appear. As she was like, what the, Azuku, how are you here? And who are those two? And basically, Bakugo's like, Deku, why are you in my house? And are those villains? As Azuzu just looks at Bakugo's like, just can it already. Don't make this like a bad farewell. He's like, huh? Which Miski and her husband are confused. He's like, I only came here to say goodbye. I'm not going to be coming back ever, actually. <laughs> I'm, I suck at saying goodbyes. So, in which Mitsuki's like, wait, what happened? why are you leaving? He goes, well, believe it or not, I'm being summoned to a different dimension where they need someone's help. So, I want to say my goodbyes to you two. And then he looks at Bachman and says, and you, I don't care. You can become the number one hero for all I care, but your personality sucks. You're just a no good person who thinks you can get everything just because you have a quirk that you call yourself better than everyone else, as he says, quote unquote. He goes like, and then he adds, and he goes like, which you're not. You're not stronger than All Might. You're not stronger than the number one hero in Japan. Well, not in Japan, in America, nor anywhere else. You're not even stronger than the world hero. So, stop acting like you're better. You have too much pride and you're annoying. I only get to say that before I leave. Which then he looks at Mitsuki and her husband. He was like, Auntie, Uncle, thank you. Thank you so much for not treating me any different. Thank you for caring about me even after my mom died. Thank you for being there for me, helping me out, paying for the well, funeral. I really appreciate everything you guys done. And. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be around no more. Which, they're confused, which Mitsuki just says, Izuku, what are, you, what are you saying? Of course you're going to be around. Of course you get to see us. As then the man in well, the hood with the cane, you know, walks up, says, no, he won't. Like he said, he's being summoned to a different dimension. Which I, along with my associate that's behind me, are... Summoning him to. Which means he was like, what? Why? He was... Yeah. It's not by our choice, but the power that my associate ho holds in her hands chose him. And so, it's basically his destiny to come with, if he so chooses. Which he did. And so... He, his only request to say goodbye to you two. Which I was not going to deny him. Our world is very dangerous. Many things could happen, even death. And I think he knows this. Right? Which is who looks back at him and nods. Which means he goes like, but, but what can you do? I'm not trying to be mean, but you don't have a quirk. And then he says, that's the best part. Where I'm going, you don't need quirks. And I already have something very useful. 
in which Bakugo was like, what? So, what, is this like a, you're coming back one day, right? Which he looks at back and he's like, no, did you not hear me? I said, farewell. Because it's only a one-way trip. Which Bakugo was like, what? Why? What about being the number one hero? He's like, <laughs> okay, how would I become the number one hero without a quirk? Should I have already taken your advice and took a swine dive off of the school? Which Bakugo freezes up and he's like, yeah, no. People who are going to be in UA like you, I had to take my chances in a different dimension. And besides, we were never friends after you started bullying me. So he basically he, his well face changed from irritation and anger to becoming soft and kind as he goes Really, again, thanks. So he goes up to Mitsuki and her husband and hug them both. And Mitsuki's you know, crying as she says, you know, I don't want, you know, basically you to leave. I promise Inko I will look after you and I can't do that. Now he goes, I'm sorry. I really am. She just says, then promise me. Promise me one thing, Izuku. He goes, huh? Promise me you won't die. At least try to send a message to me if you're alright one of these days. Which, he does look at her and nod. He goes like, I will. I promise you that. Same thing to you, Uncle. He was like, alright then. Be safe, Izuku. And, <laughs> make sure you save that world. He goes, I will. So basically, he walks back with this with the man, as then he, uh, well, they suddenly disappear. Bakugo is shocked as basically Mitsuki and her husband look at Bakugo and says, as Mitsuki, you know, pulls his ear and says, You have a lot of explaining to me what you've done to Izuku. It's just like, Shut up, you hope! As basically, all of a sudden, his father basically, you know, says, Bakugo, enough. Tell us everything. And so, we go back to the in-between worlds. As in, well, basically they are back there as Izuku says, So, how do I gain this power? And, well, they would say you technically would have been born or given it, but we don't know how. This is the first time this happened. Well, Izuku just sighs and be like, Alright, let's... Let's see what happens. So, he doesn't know why, but he does just close his eyes and he says, let's just try this. Let's see if this works. As when he basically holds out his hand, the, basically, the, well, you know, ball of fire suddenly starts to go toward Izuku's hand. And it starts then to go wrapping around it, covering his arm in fire. And then his body seeping into his skin like he's absorbing it. And when it's fully done, Hizuku's appearance doesn't change. But his eye colors do for a minute to be, be, be golden and then it stops. Hizuku's like, whoa. What the? I feel different. I feels more powerful. As in, well, Amber says, well, that seems to be everything. So... Try it out. Try something. And Izuku's like, okay. Use your weapon to summon out anything. He's like, huh. I don't know why, but let me just try this. And Izuku basically puts down his scythe, aka his staff. As then, when he throws a punch, he basically then shoots out a fire from his fist, basically. As they're shocked by this, and Izuku's like, uh, is that supposed to be normal? As... Amber says, no, I have to use a weapon to summon a fire and, well, only when I was using the full power, my eyes would technically have flames going around them, and then, well, wind, lightning, I can do anything. As this man says, huh, because you're different from our world, and you seem to already have the gene of pyrokinesis, the power of fall adapted to it and made... Fire bending, it seemed like. You basically can control the fire around you. And this isn't semblance or aura, so you have to control it or choose to use it. Huh. I'm impressed. You really are an impressive boy. 
Or should I say young man, Izuku Midoriya? No, then. Let's be off. He's like, right. As Izuku, you know, goes to the staff, you know, kicks it up, and when he grabs it, suddenly the actual staff starts to change. It starts to become more, well, starts to get, like, metal around it. It's just a normal black staff, and then, like, all of a sudden there's, like, getting metal around it, like, golden coils around, and seems of like, it basically looks like there's, like, flames covering it, and then right when the it becomes a scythe form, it seems like the false well, scythe actually has a certain, well, more, it looks like the, t the blade is actually, was, just looks like it's brand new, covered in, like, freshly polished silver, basically. Azuka's like, whoa, how did that, which, Amber's just like, amazing, that's simply amazing. So, he then just, like, kind of just, like, flicks his wrist a little, as it just changes back to a staff, and then suddenly, I mean, he's just, like, you know, compressing it down, and he puts it behind his back. He was like, huh, I guess because this power's been around for, I guess, so long, it's feeding me some information. Not enough, though, just basically to, anything to do with weaponry. It would be suitable best for me. Which, well, Amber s says, I guess that's the first time for everything. Which this man agrees. So, he's like, all right then. Off we go, Izuku. Remember, be careful who you trust. Do not tell anyone about your other power. If anyone find out about this, you'll be hunted down. Understand me. He's right. I promise that. I'll try to keep this a secret. It's like, thank you. Now, as he taps his staff, something appears underneath Azuku, and he says, good luck. And boom, Azuku just disappears. Amber says, heh. Wait, sorry, hold on. She goes, after she says, heh. She goes, I guess, well, the power of fall did choose someone worthy of it. And, well, this man nods, and she goes, now then, Ozpin, I think it's Ozpin? Let me, I wrote it down, so. Yeah, Ozpin. Yep, she goes, now then, Ozpin, what do we do if anyone finds out about him? Which, he says, well, takes off the hood, he was like, it does not matter. Because he will come to, well, <laughs> my school will be trained. Like every other huntsman and, well, huntswoman. She basically says, so... She's, he's coming to Beacon, huh? And he does not. He just, I pray for his safety. That's all. Which, he does laugh about that. So, we go to Azuku, suddenly appearing in the alleyway. He's like, okay, so... What do I do from here? Since I don't know my way. As all of a sudden, he hears explosions happening. Or, at least the sound of gunfire. Which, he runs out the alleyway. As then, well... What he basically sees is, um, obviously a girl along with a woman with blonde hair and a black, you know, cape on her. Basically, the girl has red, um, hood and a, like, scarf, or, well, cloak, whatever, and they're basically firing at an airplane, well, basically a jet copter, as he's like, what the, how's that even possible? Wait, whoa, this, this really looks weird. Not normal for my stuff, but, eh. So, I mean, basically then he basically sees an explosion happen on the building, and then the woman basically is there. You know, as, you know, looks at Ruby as she's like, for some reason, looks like she's geeking out for a minute, and then she gets like dragged. And he's like, uh, well, that seems to be, be as then all of a sudden he he hears someone says freeze and he's like also he just, and Izuku just raised up his hands he's like uh, I you know they say get on the ground and he just listens he's like just listen to them let's see what happens so yeah 
because of this, Izuku gets put in the custody, and they both, this girl with black, um, basically black with a red hood and cape, you know, basically a cape, and not a cape, but, you know, cloak, I want basically, voila, red hood, cloak, and basically wearing black and red, a lot of black and red, with silver eyes, and he's like, ugh, man, this sucks, and she goes, tell me about it, he's like, <laughs> uh, name's Izuku, Izuku Midoriya, you? Ruby, Ruby Rose, it's nice to meet you, he's like, yeah, it's a pleasure, so, uh, what happened there? She goes, oh, just stopping some people stealing dust. He's like, ah, I see. Really? Dust? Why not money? She goes, I know, right? It's so stupid. He's like, yeah, but hey, I mean, there's always worth in something. She goes, I know. So basically, her and Zuku get taken away, and, well... Ruby's getting, you know, the exact same talk. As then, when it comes to Izuku, they had no records of him anywhere. As then, well, when, well, Goodwitch, like, Glinda Goodwitch basically comes in the room, she was like, who are you? He's like, um, Izuku Midoriya. She goes, I, we know your name, you told us, but who are you specifically? Where did you come from? He's like, <laughs> Um, I come from offshore? She's like, really? Because, well, we got no records of you anywhere. Anywhere at all. So, tell me, Izuku. Midoriya. Just who exactly, as in all of a sudden, she hears a man saying, That's enough, good witch. Don't pressure the boy. There's a reason why for everything. And Izuku hears this voice. He's like, no, it can't be. I mean, he still has a scarf and the, you know, collapsible bow staff, scythe. And, <laughs> which then he sees a man walking with a cane and a drink, basically in a mug. He's like, hello there, Zuku. He's like, but you. He's like, <laughs> perceptive, I see. It's like, <laughs> so why am I here? I mean, you know, you're here. In this jail interrogation room, he's like, "Well, because of your circumstances, I'm not going to interrogate you. I already cleared it up. Basically, you don't have no records because of reasons, top secret, and you are coming to Beacon with me. See, Beacon, a school I, I basically, well, I'm the headmaster at, basically for a huntsman and huntress. So." You have no choice in the matter. He's like, you basically told me I was going to, and yeah. You have a lot of explaining to do, but that can be for later. He's like, alright. So, please, fill out these papers. We can get you citizenship, and along with any information you need, or I need, I can just fabricate it for you. Do not worry about it. He's like, right. So Zuko writes his name, you know, basically semblance, and he just calls it Eraser, because it's the best thing, like, there's really no, like, actual freaking name he can say. So, then, um, just some stuff, you know, about him, and his weapon, and his long-range weapon, which, when Goodwitch sees it, she was like... <laughs> Long range weapon, a scarf, and well, Zuko's like, yeah, it's kind of comes in handy. He's like, do you even have any battle experience? He's like, no. I mean, technically, if you take a beating from someone, counts as battle experience and training, um, and some martial arts and uh, sparring as battle training, then yeah. She goes, ah, really, Os you know, Ospin? He's like. You do not know the reason why I'm so keen on having this student come. There's a reason. And Izuku. There will be some special things happening for you, which I'll have to show you around personally. Which Goodwitch is kind of shocked, and she says, this has never happened before. Which is, well, Izuku just says, right. So, 
after, you know, basically that whole entire night, um, you know, Izuku gets a hotel room and good, which, well, it says that there will be someone to show you around. Basically, she asked one of the students to help you out. And he goes, thank you. I really appreciate it. And, yeah. So, after that, Izuku does sleep. And we would have gone, like, I do want to go to a scene, but that will be for later. So, just continuing. When Izuku wakes up, he goes, well, Tanley does his usual thing. I mean, well, was about to, but he forgot. No toothbrush. Or, wait. Huh? Two brush and two paste? One use? Or away? Uh, thanks. So, I mean, he does his, you know, stop business and then trains for a little bit. Goes downstairs and there was breakfast. Basically, it's kind of like that bed and breakfast, so... Yeah, he basically eats and he's like, Man, this stuff is really good. Which the person that served is saying, Thank you, we take pride in our food. And the chef even takes... Blah. The chef even takes special pride in well, making the food. He's like, really, I can tell. Hey, there's so much love in this. It's really amazing. So you know, he eats more as, well, the wait, waitress and chef is really happy to hear that. So after that, he, well, basically puts down the plate. Well, actually, I think there's always, like, taking the plate and go. Yeah, he takes the plate and put it somewhere right where you know, they would basically get it clean for later. As then, well... He's like, a girl in, well, blonde hair, blue eyes, brown, yellow outfit. You know, and blue, I guess, not blue, but boots. Yeah. Coming in where she has gloves. And she was like, Zuku Midoriya. Huh, I don't have a picture of him, so. She goes to the receptions and basically, you know, the sign in and sign out. She was excuse me, sir. He was like, yes, are you trying to sign in? She was no, I'm here to pick up a, well, a student to go to Beacon. His name is, uh, Izuka Midoriya. He's like, ah, he's right over there. And she was like, thanks. So, Izuku, you know, while I was walking over, thinking about who's going to pick him up, as in, well, he sees this, well, the girl. Again, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. If I um, was about to bump into you, and she was, don't worry about it. Anyways, I'm here to pick you up. Come on. He's like, uh, Beacon? She goes, yep, come on. He's like, thanks. So, he basically follows this girl, and he's like, so, what's your name? And, well, she just says, that, well, yeah, I already know your name, so it's only right. The name is Yang. Yang Chao Long. I think I said that right. If I didn't, then I don't care very much. He's like, Yang Shao Long. Interesting name. <laughs> Never heard it before, but it's nice. She goes, Thanks. Your name's weird too, you know. <laughs> yeah. I probably figured some people were gonna say that. She goes, Huh? He's, Nothing. So, um, where are we going? She goes, that airship? And he's like, uh, uh, wow. And he thinks to himself, this is so different from my world. So, basically, Yang and Izuku get onto their ship, and then all of a sudden, but, I've, you know, they see Ruby. As Yang says, Ruby! And, you know, Yang hugs her and says, I'm so glad my baby sister's getting onto the ship. Like, getting to Beacon. And she was like, Yang! Don't embarrass me. And she was like, come on. I mean, you basically got in here two years early. I'm adding my own stuff, remember? I'm not going to go 100%, but I'm going to try to stay with the story. You know? So, eh. Fight me on that one. But anyways. So, as Azuku just seen this. And then basically hers, her, I mean, you know, Ruby saying, I don't want to be any bee's knees, or, I just want to have regular knees and a regular girl and such. Blah, blah, blah. So, she was like, huh. She got here early. What academy was she in? Or, well, I think academy. I mean, that's the only way I can think of. 
since Headmaster. Uh, this isn't going to be fun. I have a feeling because I'm going to be so behind on don't know anything. Anyways, as he's thinking that, all of a sudden the news you know, report about the White Fang and then about a notorious thief. As then he hears about who the thief is. It's Roman Torch. Torchwick. Yeah, Roman Torchwick. Torchwick. He's like, okay, now that is definitely a weird name. And why does his name sound like Torchwick? Torchic. From Pokemon. Wait. Uh, Greater made that reference. Make me say that. Great. Falling back the script. And then, well, as he gets that to his group, he just shrugs it off. He's like, whatever, doesn't matter. So, after basically they're flying around, all of a sudden he sees a guy running away with, you know, yellow hair, armor, hoodie, blue pants, you know, then pukes. He's like, and then basically, you know, he hears him say, well, my boy, and the whole entire scene happens. So, as when they arrive at Beacon, right away there was someone there for him. Good witch. As he gets off, he sees, you know, her. He was like, huh? Already here for me? So, be, you know, Izuku's walking toward as Good Witch goes over to him. She goes, alright, Izuku, come on. Which everyone's like starting to whisper about it. Even Yang and Ruby are wondering, like, why is the teacher here? For him, he goes, and then some girl with white hair and a ponytail and silver, not silver eyes, but light bluish eyes, are thinking, what? A teacher taking a student already? How, what did he do? He goes, right, teach. Just lead me towards wherever I had to go, where she not. So, they say Zuko and her are walking off. And Kelman is walking, he's like, so, can you explain everything to me? <laughs> I'm, well, if I'm going to be here, my classes are going to be kind of difficult for me. And when she goes, exactly, this is why I will be assisting you in your teaching. He goes, uh, wait, what? Well, you will be taking normal classes with everyone else. But you also have an extra class, basically to cover up whatever you need to learn. And you don't even know how to read the language, it seems. Speaking it, well, seems to be somehow integrated into you. But reading the language probably will be difficult. As Izuku thinks, wait, how am I even able to understand they don't speak Japanese? As then basically he remembered when Ozpin, you know, put his hand on Izuku's head. And, you know, he's like, he must have. I mean, they could have been using the in between worlds to understand Japanese, too. So, I guess that's how it was a lot more easier. That's understandable, then. So, Izuku and Goodwitch get to, well, a class. Basically, just one seat with a board. Well, multiple boards, actually. And he goes, <laughs> so this is how it's going to be? She goes, uh-huh. This is your study for basically history, grim, you know, theology and types, along with then, well, multiple different classes, basically even reading and fighting. I want to see what you're capable of, so you do have a fine portion class, but that will be for later. For right now, though, I just want to show you where it is. You even have your own training area, which, well, we had to take all night to make. And when she's like, wait, why train area for me specifically? You're going to be even with a team. So with this team, you're going to be training with them. And it's better for them to know some things. Ozpan has already told me everything. To be frank, I'm quite shocked that you're chosen. By the power itself. He's like, wait, I was supposed to. 
And she goes, don't worry, we're supposed to protect, well, humanity in the Maidens. But you hold the power. It shows you. And this is well, quite shocking to me. So, she leads him to, well, after a few minutes, to the training area that he has. And then Ospin's there. He's like, ah, Hazuku, welcome. What do you think of this? He's like, uh, this is <laughs> a lot. Open arena to fight and train. Basically a box with sand. Many weapons to fire with and train with. That's going to be kind of useful. And wait, what's that room over there? And he goes, ah, that's the fireproof room for you to test your abilities out. Well, actually, multiple purpose room. Not just fire. It's like, uh, I see. So. My teammates. I'll have to tell them about it. And he does not. I told him to keep a secret. But I did realize. We don't have that many first years here. So you will have to be on our team of four. Basically it will be a team of five actually. Because of you. He's like, I see. But. My question is this. Is it. Gonna be, I have a choice. It was mm, somewhat. You're gonna participate in the normal exercise that these everyone else will take in to be, you know, chosen the teams. But no matter which relic you choose, it will not matter. I am sorry for that. I will choose by the base on everyone else's well, skill level and cooperation, and well, so on and so forth. It's like right. If I'm on a team of five, what happens if it's all girls and, or all guys and stuff, or just, you know? It's like, well, if it's all girls, there will be separate rooms. We have, we have to basically, well, technically, I never thought of that, actually, now that I think about it. It's like, uh, what? It's like, well, technically speaking, the train area here is actually close to the dorms, so we can just work on a dorm specifically for you and your team. And we could always just have it like for a 10 minute walk over here. It's like, <laughs> thanks. Uh, really. Thank you a lot, Hospin. In which then Hospin says, do not thank me. We basically summoned you from your world to ours. Asked you for help, and even taking it away from people you cared about. I just feel like it was un it's unfair a little bit. But at the same time, it is necessary for us to survive. It's only a one-way ticket. So, starting tomorrow, after your exercise, you will start your courses after classes. All the teachers know about your situation. So, but first off, we need to start your reading class. Which in good which, well, has a, well, always had a book in her hand, I forgot to mention, and hands him it. He's like, uh, thanks. Alright. First, open up the first page. Can you understand it? And Zuku looks at it, and no. He doesn't. I don't know if it's regular words. I just go by what I saw from the TV. I mean, from what I saw on my phone. It didn't look like, you know, words. It looked like different glyphs. So, yeah, I'm going with that logic. And she goes, alright then. I'm going to explain. So, well, she goes for the basics like the alphabet for each glyph. And Zuku was like, I see. So after a while doing this, he does get to the point of, you know, reading it. Which is kind of easy, which she's impressed by. Ospin, you know, looks looking at him was struggling at first, but slowly getting it, he's like, he's learning quickly. That's interesting. Most people if they were from a different dimension wouldn't be able to pick up so quickly. What was his analyze skill like? Well, not skill, I mean, analyze ability. Huh. So, he goes over to Izuku and Goodwitch, he's like, Zuku, may I ask you a question? He's like, uh, yeah, what? Well, what did you mostly do when, when you were back in your dimension? He was like, oh, well, besides training and all that, I had a hobby where I kept on analyzing people's quirks. I wrote down all the information I could find out about it and anything I learned. Basically. The more knowledge I learned on someone's quirk, the more I read, wrote about it. And <laughs> it always came in handy to pick up on certain things. Like, which, the bully, Bakugo. 
basically, anytime he basically was trying to use a right hook, there was always a few, basically, openings. Along with him, along with, you know, using his explosion, explosions, it always took about, like, 5.3 seconds to where it explode. Which both Ozpin and Goodwitch are shocked that he's able to understand that much. So it was... And kind of understand the language and reading this is difficult, but I'm able to pick it up and understand it. So it kind of seems like I'm learning quicker than usual, <laughs> which they just nod. And so after that, they go to the assembly, same speech as Ospin gives, and he hears like you know like Ruby exploded and all that, and all that stuff happened. <laughs> Which though he was nearby, as then Ruby was like, uh, "Azuku," he he looks back. He's like, "Oh, Ruby, hey, what's up?" He's like, "Are you okay? Are you in trouble? Are you?" Whoa, 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 whoa! Calm down. I'm fine. It's just a situation I have <laughs> that they need to talk to me about. The principal, I mean the headmaster. He goes, "Oh, I see. Are you gonna leave?" He's like, "No." It's just accommodations. That's all. Which then this girl with white hair, you know, basically ponytail, bluish, light eyes, white dress and everything, come up to him and she goes, Well then, your name sounds very different. Where do you come from? He's like, um, well, it's hard to explain, but, um, I come from a faraway land. Not, <laughs> well, it's not that, uh, I can say it's somewhere we can travel by boat. She's like, by ship? By airship then? He's like, yeah. And by the way, Izuku's wearing clothing from the... Let's just say this. He's wearing a green vest. No, green jacket with a hood on. I'm not green jacket, but... Okay. Black jacket with a hood. Tenley has a scarf on it. Well, actually, the scarf... Is that like as I was is black ish yeah yeah is black as I, he's wearing technically gray with a few with a green design on it black well not black jeans blue jeans and black sneakers he which then Ruby was like huh kind of looks like mine a little bit he's like huh she says, oh my hood and well my scarf basically the hood and well. Cape, whatever it's called. I'm really, really having troubles remembering what it's called. Clay, caper cloak, whatever. Yeah. She was like, huh. Yeah, I mean, Tyler really didn't even have any sleeves. I just turned it into a jacket. They said it really isn't long sleeve, just like. Goes around her shoulders, that's it. She goes, huh? He's like, yeah, cut. I basically cut some openings into this. So I'll be better off. So, uh, what's your name? Uh, miss? She goes, don't call me that. Her name is... I'm so going to butcher her name. Why is... She? I, yeah, she? Shy? Sheen? Why is Sneen? He's like, why is Sneen? People say my name's weird. Just, What's that supposed to mean? He's like, um, just saying. It's kind of weird to me. Not used to hearing that. Okay? They even heard that um, name. Which, everyone just looks at him and he's like, what? You never heard of Sneen Company? Dust Company? The one of the most... Basically, you know, this is Yang saying it. The one, basically, that makes the most dust for everywhere around. And then he's like, no. First time actually hearing it. Where's then? Why I say, have you been living, living under a rock? He's like, he just said thinking about it. He says, maybe. He just says with a smile. And she goes, ah. Would Blake her then? She goes, that's interesting. Someone who doesn't hear anything about the Schneen Company. 
huh, I wonder what he's like. So, Azuzuku is basically, you know, walking with Yang, Ruby, Wise. I'm just saying Wise is basically falling around because she doesn't understand. She's basically talking to him about, like, certain, like, things have anyone would know about the popular products or stuff. He's like, nope, never heard of them, never heard of that, and so on and so forth from those. And she's like, ah. So basically, they get to the core where they're sleeping at. Azuku just, you know, staying in the clothing he has. And which, well, everything goes to canon from there. Like, Ruby writing to her friends, Yane. Well, says, basically she doesn't mind being around with all the guys around. And Azuku just, well, just let... Like, so like, near a wall, just, like, leaning against, based on the window, so, like, okay. So, basically, the way I'm thinking of it is, there's basically a piece of wood he's able to sleep on, put, like, hold her, like, he wants to sleep on, like, a normal bed, but the thing is, the window, like, goes out, so, you know, you get to see at, you know, I think vanity or something, I guess it's called, I don't know, well, whatever, besides the point. So, I mean, his was just sleeping there as he's hearing everything. He's like, uh, tomorrow, what's it going to be like? <sighs> Hopefully I'm on a good team. As he slowly drifts off to sleep. Now, we go to Ozpin and Goodwish. She goes, okay, so there's going to be a, one team of five. And whoever that team is, is going to have a Zuku on it. And we're going to explain to them about... Well, his power. What about his semblance? You only told me that he was from a different world. He has the power of fall. That which I should mention a maiden should have. Why did the power choose him? Hold on. Okay, sorry. Anyways, Ozpin then says, I do not know, but I'm not questioning it. Basically, what I saw was... He basically just sticked out his hand with his eyes closed, as, well, the, the power seemed to be drawn into him, covering him as he absorbed it to seem like it's very unique, and, well, it seems that he can basically firebend. When she goes, huh? Firebend? He goes, yes. You see, when he threw a punch, flames came out of it. I think if he has a well, strong emotion or desire, the flames will become bigger, but he cannot use the power and with many people around. As I told him, do not use it around people. But I did not I did forget about he will have to be on a team of people, so at least he can trust his teammates. Which yeah. She does not. She goes, I understand. I'm sorry, Ozpin. He goes, it's no problem. But how's Amber doing, though? She's fine, actually. She seems to be making a steady recovery. But we have to, well, trick some people. Whoever's after the power into believing that <laughs> it was given to someone else. So, it seems like his own semblance is making sure that power of his is in check. Which he goes, huh? Yes, his semblance erases people's, well, auras, semblance, dust, and weakens Grimm's power significantly. With people's semblance, dust, auras, and other semblance, well, I already said semblance, they are not able to be used, which her eyes widen. And so, just imagine that with that power that's inside of him. The semblance of that power, well, our work, if you think about it, will be working in unison. It basically is keeping it from being hidden unless he's using it. So, no one would know he has the power. And only, basically, no, anyone knows is a girl is basically having the power of a maiden. Or the power of, basically, fall, summer, winter, and spring. Which, good which nods, nods. And so, he was, I think, for a look, if he never uses that power, he 
could be good. He could tackle him down get good control over it and learn how to properly use it before anything bad happens to him. He's in which then Gubik just says, I hope so. So, when everyone's waking up, Izuku does everything he do needs to do. He basically, or, or I forgot to mention, they all got their sheets. And they didn't even show them when they got their sheets for their locker. So, anyways, besides that little, like, gripe I have, I think. Yeah, Izuku does whatever he needs to do. And, well, he, uh... He basically eats his breakfast and then go to his locker, in which he's kind of he's basically near Yang and Ruby as Yang basically saying about Ruby opening it up and you know talking to people. And then Izuku's like, you know, after he gets his staff, well, basically staff scythe um, compact. Basically goes over. He's like, huh? Um. About somebody opening it up, and Ruby was like, "Oh, it's nothing." It's like then Yane says, "Oh, it's just my little sister here doesn't like to open up to people." He's like, "Which Ruby's like, Yane, don't tell him that." He's like, "Izuku just adds and he goes, oh, I see. Yeah, people can be real jerks and hard to talk to, but I mean, we all gotta talk to some people. Can't be always alone." Anyways, uh, good luck, guys. And which then um, Izuku kind of just takes his arms out of the well, sleeve, well, the openings in the basically hood cloak. Okay, it's like Ruby's but different, it's just black. All right, and for some reason, Izuku kind of uses his aura to basically make sure the fabric like gets back to stitch together. He's like, huh. That's one way of finding out how to use this properly. In which Ruby's like, see, even he agreed on it a little. Which Ian goes like, yeah, yeah, but he did say you have to talk to people. He's like, I know. So yeah, so basically we just go to when everyone's on the platforms and they're, they're going to be launched. So Good Witch says exactly the exact same thing. Along with then, well... Ozpin, and then Gene asks about everything. He'll be saying, like, about landing properly and such, and, like, landing strategy. And so, we, Zuku was on a platform, too. He's like, what about me? He goes, well, Goodwork says, we basically made something special for you. There is a artifact out there, but it will be of, well, here's a picture. These ruins are nearby. Well, technically near to the one that the other people go. And since there's a, a number of people, you can technically be by yourself if you want. Okay? He's like, right. And then Osman says, now Izuku, we know you have no training. But, rely on your instincts. Let everything flow. And, use that instincts to keep you safe. It's like, right. And what do you mean by flow? Let everything go and be calm. Which Izuku says, ah, uh, gotcha. And so basically he la he gets launched. As in, well, Goodwood says, are you sure you can handle this? Ozpan just says, I do not know, but I have faith in him. So, Azuku, as everyone's going exactly the same for everyone else, as you know, for their landing, Azuku basically uses the scarf to basically fling it forward, wraps around something, uses it to pull himself, and swings. As then he kind of pulls on the scarf to let go, you know, something, and then basically then gets out the staff, you know, the, well, the compact staff, then turns into a scythe. But just like thinking of it now because it's like I mean he doesn't know he just thinks shit I don't have enough time to flip the switch I need the blade out as then all of a sudden the blade comes out as he goes like that works and he well he, you know does what Ruby would do with the scythe and he spins himself around and well lands on a tree jumps off of it you know doing a backflip and lands perfectly fine he's like and stick the landing <laughs>
Okay, so I don't know these woods. I should probably find whoever's nearby and follow them. Yeah, and I probably should get good, well, good combat experience in here. I shouldn't use the flames or any of the powers I have besides my semblance. That should be good enough. So, Azuku basically is, you know, running forward. He's, um, he basically starts hearing, you know, a lot of gunfire, fire basically. He was like, what the? There's probably someone in danger. As he basically runs towards that. When the, by the time he gets there, he sees Blake and Yang. And he's like, uh, well, that's easy. So, everything's going exactly the same. Yozuka's just following Blake and Yang. And, well, they get to the podium with all the relics. And Azuka's like, huh, I wonder where mine is. So, he gets, he has an idea to get on top of the tree, which he gets on the tallest tree he can. And then he looks as, well, there is a actual, not like tower, but a clearing of trees. And then he sees a goblet. He's like, well, that was it. Exactly like the picture says. So, Azuku jumps down the tree and just starts running because he wants to get. Well, he's up. To, he wants to get back as quickly as possible, but he doesn't have any combat experience. So, wait, give me a minute, guys. All right. So, as I was saying, Azuku gets moved around towards the goblets. He's wants to get out of there as soon as possible, but he is kind of upset. He doesn't have any combat experience yet. So, when he gets to the goblet, he goes like, "Well." Oh, Kind of glad I uh, didn't run into anything too dangerous or at all, but also upset. So, Azuku grabs the goblet and he's like, Alright, well, crap, I don't have no bag for this. And, well, he just sees a note that was underneath the goblet. And, well, he picks it up and it says, Look behind here. Well, look behind the pillar that the goblet's on. There's a bag for it. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's... And then it says from Goodwitch, he's like, okay, that's why it's it. So he kind of just burned the card. Burned the letter a little bit. Yeah, he burned the letter and he picks up the bag with the goblet in it. And he straps it, you know, closes up really tight. So, right when he's walking away, he hears rustling in the bushes, as in, well, when he looks back, he sees these creatures, black with claws, you know, mask on them, but you know, it looks like, with, but it also shows, it looks like it's their teeth, he's like, what the, as then he was like, so these must be the Grimms, all right, then, as then he gets back out his, you know, staff, his bow staff, basically, he's like, come at me then, and what type of grims they are? They're wolf and bear type grims. So, Izuku run like you know runs towards one that's you know coming at him, which is a wolf one. He basically, um, how can I say this? He spins around with a staff in hand as one was trying as it was trying to swipe him. He then hits in the face as it basically you know gets hit, and then all of a sudden he basically starts spinning around, hitting it and such. So. Yeah, he's kind of just like doing that as he's backing up a little bit, and then he kind of like throws a punch to it, hitting the stomach, then a kick, jumps up, having the staff on the ground, kicking it in the face. Then right when one was about to like hit him, he kind of uses the staff, you know, kicked it to the sides, and then hits it a like, grim in the chin, sends his head upwards, grabbing the staff again, has the blade come out, and then just starts slicing on it. All of a sudden, Izuku starts running, basically. And, well, he starts, like, slicing them. All of them, keeping it up. All of a sudden, he doesn't even know how to activate his semblance. But, he just tries to think what a razor head would do. But he can't. It's not working. His eyes are like, shit, shit, uh, maybe this will work? As then he suddenly snaps his fingers. As all of a sudden, everything, like, a dome of, of basically, like, black... Like, there's, like, lines. You can basically see it. The lines are going, like, towards... There's, like, a center point. And then there's, like, lines basically making a rim. Like, five feet. 
basically the size of our arena will be. So, yeah. So anyway, Suzuku basically seen the Grimm's technically like going on a knee basically. Hold on. As I was saying, going on a knee, looking like they're weaker. He's like, huh. All right, then. Let's see how fast I can move. I know I've been training a lot, so maybe in this where I get a little bit of a speed boost. So when Suzuku starts running again, he's starting to notice he's a little bit faster than normal. And he does start slashing at the Grimm's, cutting them down easily until there's only one left. And then he starts spinning a scythe, you know, in his hand. And then over, well, it's to the side and over his head and slashes down, cutting the Grimm as it then, you know, fades. He's like, huh, first time in a fight like this. Cool. All right, then. Let's see. There's, is then basically, you know, it's a big giant bird and, uh, well, up in the air. He's like... Wait, it looks like it's circling around. So Zuku starts running towards it, as well for some weird reason, uh, you know, Ozpin and Griff, you know, I mean Goodwitch are watching it. They basically see Zuku's having like, for some reason, crow feathers come well feathers coming off of it when he's running. Yeah, I kind of want to do the exact same thing with Ruby, but it's like, it's basically because of his, not because of his semblance. Well, because of the semblance, but it's also because of, well, the story he went to, I want to kind of, like, give it, like, in in the next part. Just telling you, like, how and why. So, yeah. Actually, no, Griff, you know, Goodwitch can just tell Ospin. As Ospin goes, like, why is his hood cape um, having feathers coming off it? And then Goodwitch goes, oh... Well, you told me to, well, buy him some clothing before taking him to the bed and breakfast, as I did. Well, technically we bought those pair for right now, the ones he's wearing. And it seems like when I bought, basically bought the, that technically hood slash cape, well, cloak, hood and cloak, basically. It, um, it was said that when the user was wearing this, a unique semblance someone used their uh, father it was never basically bought it's no one ever bought it so it's half price but anyways when the when they basically put in the semblance whoever wore it will basically get faster each time they basically run the more the longer they wear it the more they run though and the faster it'll become feathers are sort of coming off of it because this was made with a creature that always Flew around and the feathers were coming off no matter what, and it never seemed to be mo you know, never seemed to run out. It's like, ah, oh, I see. So, a special, well, a special gear or clothing item. Just, yep, it wasn't really that much, so I just said, all right, take it. He seemed really interested in it. He's like, ah, oh. so, as he was running towards it, he realized he's got a little bit faster. And what he sees is just Ruby and, you know, everyone else taking out the Scorpion Grim on the Bird Grim. He's, well, and he's just shocked by that. He's like, wow, impressive. Which, well, Jean, Pyra, Nora, and Lee see him. They're like, what? Who are you? He's like, oh, um, Izuka Midoriya. I just took out some Grimms over that way, and I just saw what she did. What Ruby did, and I guess her team? Which y'all just look at him, and basically like, yeah, it's amazing. It's, yeah. So, after that, they all got back to Beacon, and that was the team's uniform. So, I am gonna, I do have an idea which team he should be going on. But, no, let's just say this. So, Gene gets onto, you know, the exact same team he has. The only team that's being formed now is Ruby. So, because he got his goblet, you know, he, you know, um, Ozpin says, after he pronounced who's the team leader and team Ruby, he says, now then, we all know we, I, we have one more student here. So, I'd like to say this. 
I wanted to keep this a secret till everyone was forming teams. So, basically, one team will have a team of five. And there are some things that will come with this benefit of having a zoo, well, that team member on. Azuku, please come forward. Azuku gets up, and everyone can see him. He's like, now then, the team he'll be joining is... Team Ruby. In which I want to shop by because I mean, well, everyone's surprised and kind of shocked because a new team, like a team of five. He's like, now, will you all come with me? I'll show you about your quarters and anything else. In which they're shocked, but as you can tell them, come on. So they will follow. But anyways, that's all, everyone. I hope you guys like this. What if? I'm trying my best with this one. So yeah. Anyways, if you guys don't think Ruby's team is good, please let me know. I, if you guys think he should be on his own or with different team, I think he should be on Team Ruby because, well, it's gonna be, you know where the most you know like most fighting will happen around. So yeah. But anyways, you guys have a nice night, day, wherever you are. Bye.